All right, hey guys, Chris here with Armatan Quads. Um, making a video for a new frame. It is the Armadillo, in this case, the Armadillo uh, five inch props. These are the five inch arms here. Um, I've received a couple emails now from guys who are not quite sure what to do with the, the parts you're looking at here because that's what you would receive essentially if you um, order a frame. Got some hardware, some carbon fiber parts, and LED, and things. So I want to make a video to essentially show us, show the assembly, and then also take a minute or two after the model is assembled to talk to you about it a bit and tell you a bit what we had in mind when we got to work on this design. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So let's start with assembly. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice, actually, let's just go through the parts you get first. Of course, you'll have four arms. You will have two vertical plates, side plates, and they're not the same. We have the left side here, which is uh, got SMA adapter, a hold for SMA adapter. And then on the right side plate, we have an oval O, which is for your pigtail to go through. So oval on the right and circle on the left and the reason why it's like this it's basically because our pads on the PDB for the battery uh, pigtail are on the right side therefore we do need to have the oval hole on the right side for the pigtail to connect to the PDB and then we've got a small top plate a big top plate we've got a VTX tail adapter which can be replaced with a LED instead, which is configurable in clean flight or base flight, or I'm not even sure actually if it works base flight. We work with better flight and uh, clean flight. And we've got three standoffs, and then we've got an array of little hardware. This stuff here is nylon. This is for your FC stack. You're going to get a bunch of these sunk nuts here, and I'll show you what they're used for. Some of them I've already installed now to save time in the video. And you're going to get eight millimeter bolts and 12 millimeter bolts right here that are going to be used to assemble the, the, the main frame. And we've got two carbon fiber um, cam braces with two little, I call them rubber dimes essentially. And they won't come assembled, they'll come like this. And I will explain that to you as well. A bunch of guys have had issues with these because when they get it, they're not quite sure how to, to install that. So I'll go through that. And then you'll get two Alumi thumb screws, which are also for the cam braces. And finally, you will get tiny little M2 bolts and tiny little nylon washers. And this is to uh, secure your camera to the cam braces. So that's for the parts on oh, the three standoffs here. So that's for the parts that you will receive with this. So let's go ahead and assemble this guy now. Uh, let's look at the PDB here. We see that there's slots at the front. These are essentially for the cam braces to go on like so. Therefore, this has to be the front end of the model. So one thing that guys have had issues, not with this model only, but other models is that when it comes to sunk nuts, uh, for the models that we shipped with the sunk nuts not already press fit into the plates, guys will try to use these bolts uh, to pull on the sunk nut using the bolt only and it's not going to work. Uh, it would work okay with the PDB. This is FR4. The material is not quite as um, as hard and it's easier to pull, pull the sunk nuts in there. but. What happens is these button bolts that you get, button head bolt that we ship, is that they have a 2.0 millimeter hex drive, like so. And so it's pretty small. It's not the strongest bolt you got there. And if you use that to try and pull a sun nut into the carbon fiber, you are simply going to strip the hole here. You want to strip that out and then you, the, bolt, the bolt is ruined all the while the sun nut is not in all the way. And with this model, it poses even more of a problem because we're using eight millimeter. And at eight millimeter, it works great, but it will not work at all unless your sun nut is not already fully sunk in there. If you try to pull that those nuts in using eight millimeter from the other side, 
it's going to strip guaranteed. So, the first thing you want to do is actually install the sound nuts in your two plates. I've already done most of them. I'll do the last one here. And all you want to do that is simply put it as centered as you can and then use a hammer like this. And then you make sure that the sound nut is totally in, nice and even, we're good to go. Likewise with the PDB, I'm just gonna finish it off. I'm missing one here, put that there, hammer that in place, and then you're good to go. All right, so now we've got our two plates that are going to go like so. And we need the arms between there. I wish I could speed up, I would be better with video editing. If I were, I would be able to speed up this part here, only show you how to assemble one arm, for example, and then speed up the rest, but I'm not good at editing, so I'm gonna have to put up with this here, it's gonna be a little bit boring. So eight millimeter from the top, and then 12 millimeter from the bottom. And I don't tighten these yet now. I just sit them, is what I would call that. I just sit them in place all the way in, but not tight. You go, one arm's installed. And then, one more arm. Again, the same size from the top, eight mil. And from the bottom, 12 mil. Repeat that two more times. I'm trying to hurry up so that the video is not going to be too long. Line that up here. All right. Go. just going to, once it's all assembled, I just make sure everything lines up well, and it will, the, 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 parts, are, the parts are basically perfect, uh, let me show you, I'll, I'll show this to you in a second. Now, before I tighten the bolt, I make sure that I'm nice and even at the front here, nice and even here, and here, and here, which right now is perfect. So I can go ahead and just tight, tighten these bolts nice and tight. Don't need to strip them and go too tight. Although you won't be able to strip them with a two millimeter drive. You just won't. You'll be able to strip the hole. You won't be able to strip the bolt. And then tighten the top ones. There we go. Okay, so that's basically our center section here now. And it's super stiff and it's obviously super strong an impact uh, the pressure on these bolts is very minimal because in an impact that's the, the, the is essentially that the, the force that applies to one bolt needs to also transfer to the next bolt and the next bolt so you can't have uh, put it this way you can't have strength go on one bolt without affecting all the other bolts essentially all of them will have to somehow be affected for one of these arms to move one way or the other so it won't move it will break maybe and it won't move with super super stiff um, so that's the center section and then the nylon hardware let's do that while I still got everything open makes it easy this goes like so stand up go on top six millimeter male female nylon standoff and basically that's what your flight controller will sit on and then you finish that up on top with nylon nuts to secure your flight controller in place. All right, so that's for that. The next thing we're going to do is I will show you the side plates. Again, I remember we've got a right side with oval, left side 
circle and you have to pay in mind when you install this you don't go and place it the wrong way around because you could literally go like this and think okay I got right side oval I got left side circle I'm good to go but no you're not because your pigtail pads are bad up there now so this is the rear of the model right it's plus and minus pad so we need to that's this being the rear this being the front and circle on the left oval on the right goes on like this and then forgot to actually I forgot to show the seven mils both the six six seven millimeter bolts you want to use with this which will also be included in your kit and the way I would do this myself to make it simple I simply start one side like so secure the stand off there secure one more here and then the final one here all right now before i even go there i'm going to make this real simple for myself i'm going to attach this side to it too simply lay that down like this this time i give it just about one turn on the screw so that the screw won't fall out but i need this nice and loose just like that won't fall out okay and like this all right as you can see now i have i have room to expand here this is what makes it very easy i can just simply go on there pop that in place and that's that now i've got my structure left right next thing i want to do is the cam brace now uh, the cam braces are two ends, one of them's got a shorter tab, one of them has got, it's got what appears to be a longer tab on there. This is the top, this is the bottom, and the, the angle here is at the front. So you need to be careful which way you put your little rubber in there because you need to mirror your cam braces. So if we look at this one now, I mentioned the large tab is at the top, so this would essentially go here now on this side. Like so, just get a better light on here, pop that into its groove, it goes right there like so. And as you can see, the rubber part is on the inside. And on the outside, all you see is the little ring. So this goes towards your camera, this bit here, and this bit here goes towards the outside. So now what we want to do, since we have one that's already a right side, we want to have the left side, I'm going to match it, therefore my rubber bit needs to go on this side, not that side. To do this, I usually drop a little bit of oil on the, on the gasket here, on the rubber part here, to make it really move easy. I've already done that earlier, I won't need to do it again. And I just simply pop that in there like that. Alright. As that goes like this. Alright. Over here, you got this little sun nut, I'm going to put that in there. Push that nice and clean in there. Likewise with this. Push that in there. And then you got your Illumi thumb screw. It simply screws from this side. And that will serve as a stopper for the tilt on your camera. Once this is tight, the camera can't tilt no more. And the camera stops here. Essentially, I don't have a little camera up here with me now. I'm just gonna try to grab something square here's a cigarette lighter let's say that's your camera lens and that's the back of your camera case it's just going to sit like that and once it sits there this hole in the center here will line up exactly with the camera mount where you usually use these cheap they come with these what i call them cheese screws they're horrible they strip so easily uh, so we don't want to use that instead what we include is little nylon washers and then two bolts the nylon washer will go here and in the dime, it doesn't go in that easily without screwing the bolt. When you use the bolt, goes right in there. There you go. And then this little M2 bolt will secure your camera in place in a much, much better fashion than the cheese screw made of aluminum that come with the cam. These are uh, iron M2 screws, and as you can see it sticks out now just enough to get your camera on there nice and tight. And henceforth, after that, every time you move your camera, this bolt doesn't turn. 
All right, it's totally insulated. So we don't rely on this bolt being loose enough for the camera to move up and down. We simply rely get that bolt out on this thumb screw here. And as you can see, I can change my angle as I wish now for my camera. So that's this. I'll just finish this one up real quick here. Put the thumb, the thumb, thumb screw on there. And as you can see now, the only hardware we got left is this little M2 bolt and washer for the camera. I'll actually pop this one in there too here. That's for good measure. There we go. So now I've got my two cam braces, which will actually go in. This would be left, and this will be right. So let's try to show it to you at this angle like this. This the camera lens will be on this side here. Okay, so now I simply put that in there. One here and one here. Now they're in their slot. Now I want to do is I want to put this top plate here and get that slotted together, secure that nice and solid together, and it's going to go like this. Pop it to the left. There's a groove on the side of the side plates here. Pop that in there. All right, and then you just want to. I will tell you this is easier to do when the camera is actually installed. When you have the two cam braces mounted to the camera, then it makes it very easy to the, for the two cam braces to sit there um, at the right angle essentially for them to pop in. And there you go, now it's popped in there and here. There you go. Now I got my front section nice and tightened on there with my cam braces there. What I will do is I will tighten this screw. Make sure this can't come out now. Okay, so now I can't lose this, no more won't fall out. Next thing I do, I take this plate and I will insert it on one side like this. And now of course I'm a little bit tight on this side now, but I still got two loose screws, so I'll just do that. There you go. There we go, win face. And then from there I can choose to use the VTX adapter or the LED. And you have two angles that you can choose for the LED. One is 90 degrees, another one is actually tilted down a bit so that when you're going forward, the LED will be more visible to the person behind you. So that's what I will select now. Select that there. As you can see now, it's, it's angled this way. But when I'm down like this, it's actually 90 degrees now. So easier to see for the pilot behind you. And now that that's done, I can go right ahead and secure bolts side this time nice and tight so it's tight already and I'll give these guys on this on this side a quick tug as well keep them nice and tight okay and this is it now the frame is fully assembled. Um, you look at this. And then over here, all I need to do is loosen this if I want to and change the tilt on my camera to whatever I want. All right, see the cam plates are a little bit loose in there now. As soon as you put the cam in there, nothing moves. It's nice and tight and definitely no jiggle at all. So that's that, and basically that's it. That's how you assemble this frame. Now on a quick few notes of what we're trying to do with this, I will tell you, this is a design that started with, um, I wanted to create something that was just almost the same width as a flight controller. I didn't want to have, you know, most of the H frames out there, or I don't, you know, I know this is an H frame, but I kind of consider it a bit of an hybrid between an H frame and uh, uh, X-frame because while it is a while it is um, X-frame uh, H-frame sorry what is neat about this is that if you were to run a line from center of this motor to the center of this motor my ruler is too short to show you now but that line would fall exactly in the center of the flight controller which makes for a very nicely proportioned uh, balanced model uh, in my opinion and has flight character characteristics this way um, and then the other thing that I wanted is create something that had fully protected electronics. Uh, we have attempted that in the past with, for example, the Morphite V2. But, you know, we've learned a lot since that. 
we learn a lot um, in terms of different materials to use the thickness required for certain applications and one of the things we've done with the Morphide V2 is that all these side plates were all one millimeter thick or 1.5 millimeter thick and it's just simply not strong enough uh, while it felt very strong in tests once you actually strap a 4 s lipo on this and two 204 motors and you just slam that into a 3 we had issues with the front end braking and whatnot. Whereas with this, we more or, look, more or less replicated uh, the pod style of the MRP pod. Or, and these, these guys can really take a beating. I mean, it will happen that you hit a tree face on and that some of the carbon fiber here will get some damage on there. But uh, usually your camera won't, won't suffer too much. And then your electronics are very well protected. And on top of that, this model is warranted from bumper to bumper. So it doesn't matter what part you break, this will be replaced for free for life. And uh, I'm very, very confident in this model doing well in this regard because uh, the design is very, very sound. And I think in a picture, uh, when guys look at this, they may feel well, it looks kind of big, but it, it's not. I mean, look at this in my hand now. Like it's very small and uh, while the flight controller is uh, 36 millimeter wide, the center section on there is 38 millimeter. So we only got really one millimeter on either side of the flight controller of space there, make sure nothing touches. Um, and of course it makes for quite a tight build. So it's something that I think is easier for experienced builder. It's better to build these using as little pins and stuff and hard soldering your stuff on there it is likely nicer. Uh, yeah so that's it guys this is the armadillo 5 there's also a four inch version uh, for four inch prop I will call it the armadillo pup so this will be the Arm armadillo the big armadillo five inch props and we've got the four inch prop version and aside from the arms uh, there's no differences uh, they assemble the same and everything and then we also have uh, some blue of these plates coming in which will be available for these models soon now all right guys that is the armadillo thank you very much cheers